I'm going to say just two letters. And when I do, you are going to have a strong emotional reaction. Are you ready? A I. How do you feel? Fear? Intrigued? Disgust? Excitement? Anticipation? There's no doubt that people are talking more and more about AI than ever before. But AI is not new. And machine learning isn't actually new either. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm Jill Saskin Gales. I use the pronouns she and her, and I'm a Google Ads coach, consultant, and course creator. Today, we're going to talk about what AI is exactly, because that term, those two letters, can mean a lot of different things. We're going to talk about how AI is used in Google Ads and how you can use new forms of AI to get better results in your campaigns. So let's dive in. What is AI? AI stands for artificial intelligence, and it's been around for decades. And the key here is that word artificial, right? AI systems aren't actually intelligent, but they seem to be intelligent because they're capable of processing large amounts of information in a way that human brains just can't. So AI has been around for quite some time. The most famous example is to think of the famous IBM computer that played that Russian and chess and won, and it was like, ah, the end of human civilization. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. But when we talk about AI and that kind of system, what that means is that a computer was programmed by very intelligent humans to follow a huge set of directions. If this, then that. If this, then that. If this, then that. Teaching it all the rules of chess so that it could play chess really well. The next big leap forward in the field came when machine learning, ML, became more mainstream. And the key word here is learning, because with machine learning, the machine is actually learning on large data sets. So rather than programming a machine with here are all the rules and scenarios of how to play chess, instead we say, hey, machine, go watch a million chess games. And from that, you're going to figure out how chess works. The way I like to think about machine learning is that it's actually how humans learn language. My son is just over a year old right now. He's not talking yet beyond da, 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 a, da, a, da, no mama yet. But when we want to teach him language, I'm not sitting him down in front of the dictionary. That would be AI, right? Here's all the rules of language. Instead, my son is exposed to language all around him. Every day we talk to him, we read to him, we sing to him. And through that, he's starting to pick up bits of how language works and he's making some sounds. He doesn't have enough data yet to fully know how to speak, but he will. Just like when a computer or an algorithm is given enough data, it can learn and make its own inferences about how we talk, how we speak, how to play games, and things like that. Now, LLM is one more <laughs> uh, acronym we're going to talk about, and that is a large language model. And it's a kind of machine learning where the computer is trained to understand and create language. So it's given a huge data set, like every written word ever created in the English language, for example, and from that learns how to not talk, it's usually in a written form, but create new sentences, create new paragraphs, not necessarily create new ideas, because the way these LLMs work, and if you've used a tool like ChatGPT or Gemini or Claude, you've interacted with one, the way they work is coming up with the most probable answer based on everything they've seen, what is the most likely thing that is to be expected? And that's what they come up with. So now we talk about generative AI or Gen AI. And as we talk about AI through the rest of this video, that's the kind of AI we're talking about, where the AI is generating new things based on this large language model behind it, programmed in a machine learning way. All right, we've got our terminology. So generative AI in Google Ads is the hot new thing. But it's important to remember that AI in Google Ads and even machine learning in Google Ads is not new. We've been smart bidding for a long time. We've been using tools like optimized targeting or audience signals for a long time. So AI has been powering our Google ads in a whole variety of ways, but this generative AI is new. And one of the places that's having the biggest impact in Google ads right now is asset generation, specifically coming up with text assets for your ads, coming up with image assets for your ads, and I'm sure any day now coming up with video assets for your ads. Now, in this age of generative AI, where anyone can just get the machine to create their ads for them, does that mean that we don't need copywriters or don't need designers? 
Absolutely not. Remember, the way these models work is producing the most likely answer, the average. So just like when everyone gets access to smart bidding and everyone has access to the same bidding algorithms, the way you get an edge is by bringing in something only you have, like first-party data or a highly converting website. Same with generative AI assets. The way you prompt the machine, the information you give to it is really going to impact what you get out of it. Garbage in, garbage out, high quality in, high quality out. So we're going to take a look now at the Google Ads interface and then two third-party tools, ChatGPT, the free version, and Gemini, the free version, to see how we can use these different tools to generate text and image assets for us. And we'll all let you see for yourself what you think of the different options and how they could potentially help you generate more assets for your ads. Let's take a look. For this demonstration today, we're going to use a business called The Playful Peacock, Great store run by a friend of mine, handmade, sustainable toys, wooden toys, and other kinds of toys. So let's see how Google Ads, ChatGPT, and Gemini can handle asset generation for this business. So for this demonstration, I came up with a prompt in advance. Let's take a look. I said, act as a copywriter who is skilled in writing ads for high converting Google Ads. Not going to say that's the best prompt ever, but wanted to give it something. I'm creating ads for an e-commerce store, and then I copied in the brand's ethos, and that's my attempt to get at like the specific brand voice and the important things about this brand we're trying to get at here. And then I asked it to suggest headlines with the character limit and descriptions with the character limit. So here's how Gemini did. Gemini did exactly what I asked, 15 headlines, uh, four descriptions. It looks like it obeyed the character count, and for each one, it even told me what was great about it. So handmade wooden toys, classic and straightforward, playful learning focuses on educational value, et cetera. So I'd say this was a pretty good job. You know, I'm not seeing any like calls to action or social proof, um, but there's some good kind of feature and benefit stuff here that I would absolutely use. Handmade wood toys spark imagination naturally. Like that's kind of creative. All right, let's see how ChatGPT did with the same prompt. So exact same prompt. We're in the free version of ChatGPT. Uh, headlines, it gave me 15. Descriptions, it gave me four. Quite short, the descriptions. I did say up to 90 characters, so it's not wrong. Um, and it looks like it got even more creative. Handcrafted joy, play with purpose, sustainable smiles, uh, ethical playtime for little ones. I'd say these are pretty good too. I personally liked the Gemini results a little better in this example. Um, I thought they fit the brand voice more and took more liberties, and I like how it kind of explained what it was doing. But you know what? These ChatGPT ones are pretty usable as well. Not too bad. So let's see how Google Ads itself did. Um, so I said the same thing here when I was setting up a search campaign. I gave it the URL. I gave it the same prompt and information. And it generated keywords for me. And then it said, I can't generate headlines or descriptions. All right. It did find some images, which these are images directly from the website. Um, it found some site link ideas for me. So let's review. Uh, shop all, soft toys, toddler toys, blog center, I probably wouldn't want. This is one brand of toys that are held there. So a helpful starting point for site links. Um, so then I just said, please generate headlines and descriptions about handmade, ethically made, sustainably sourced wooden toys from a toy shop called the Playful Peacock. And it wasn't able to do that. So uh, in this example, Google Ads failed, but it did generate some keywords for me, wooden toys, wooden blocks, children's toys. It included the brand name there, the Playful Peacock. So I'd say this is not a bad starting point. Something like game toys or play toys would be much too generic for this kind of business, um, but not a bad starting point. So then I thought, oh, how would Gemini and ChatGPT do with that? So let's check ChatGPT first. I then just said, please suggest 20 keywords. And these are much better than Google's suggestions, in my opinion, even though they're both given the exact same information. Handmade wooden toys, eco-friendly toys. Some of these probably there wouldn't be enough search volume for. Like, I don't know if ChatGPT really grasped the concept of this is a keyword, like sustainable craftsmanship. That would not be a good keyword, but ethical toy shop would be like the best keyword. So real mix here. And let's see how Gemini did with the same thing. Please suggest 20 keywords. So here gave me 30 keywords and it even told me broad, phrase match, and long tail, mixing and matching its Google Ads concepts. But I find this the Gemini, it's pretty good, the free version at like taking in the context it knows that this is for Google Ads and suggesting more things. So wooden toys, handmade toys, eco-friendly toys. So these suggestions are similar to the ones that came in the Google Ads interface, but I think it did a better job of getting a bit more specific because then for phrase match, 
you know, Montessori wooden toys for babies, Waldorf wooden toys. It's pulling in all these other concepts that I didn't mention in my prompt, but are absolutely relevant to this business. And then long tail, buy wooden toys online, wooden toy kitchen sets Canada or relevant location. Look at you, Gemini, pretty cunning. So based on this demonstration, I personally would use Gemini for this task more so than the in-platform generation, just because I find it more helpful. When I've used Google's own in-UI generative AI capabilities, they tend to be quite conservative, quite literal, uh, not getting very creative. And you know what? I want a little creativity. If I wanted to be very literal, I would just write it myself, and I'm no copywriter. Now, for image generation, Gemini and ChatGPT don't let you generate images in their free version. So let's take a look at how we might generate images in Google Ads. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you in a demand gen campaign as part of the creation process. So I gave it the same long prompt, you know, a lot of information, except instead of asking it to generate headlines and descriptions, I said, please generate an image of a child viewed from the back, playing on the floor with wooden blocks. The room the child is in should have a neutral color palette. So this is the first picture it came up with. Um, neutral color palette is there. There's no child. Uh, these blocks are in a shape that they kind of look like a person. There's a lemon, some stuff. I don't know if these two things in the foreground are supposed to be fruits or wood. This looks kind of, anyway, interesting. Not quite what I was going for, but interesting. And so I said, you know, make some more, please. So here's one, uh, some wooden blocks. This would be kind of okay if there wasn't a very sad looking duck that looks like the wood is melting on the right. Um, it didn't put a person in here. And as of right now, you know, Google Gemini is not generating images of people at all. Something to keep in mind, uh, whereas ChatGPT is on the paid version. And then here, it's almost cute. There's just some melty stuff happening in the foreground. So again, why does this happen? Why does generative AI do this? Remember, it's not like it knows, I need to make an image of a child and blocks and knowing what those things are. It's just taking all the data it's ingested and putting forth the most probable or most likely answer. And so it doesn't fully understand that wood should not blur at the edges in an image uh, the way that this plant right here is blurring at the ends in an image. It's why you'll often see generative AI create humans with six fingers or have the complete inability to spell anything correctly, even if you tell it exactly what letters you want. It doesn't understand the concept of a letter the way a human would. It is artificially intelligent. But it can do stuff like this, which I could not do in 10 seconds generating an image like this. So in this example, I don't find these terribly usable. And in general, when I've tested this for a product-based business, you have specific products. So it's unlikely this is going to do a better job at that. Um, but if you are trying to illustrate a more abstract idea or some kind of software or something, then generating images like this within Google Ads may be helpful to you. And that's why we saw in the search campaign over here, it suggested images for me. These are images from my website. Um, and there are capabilities in platform where we'll kind of clean up and put things on a white background. So with this example, I don't actually know if it did that behind the scenes. Let's see. Let's find that product on the page here. Yeah, so we already had this image, you know, e-commerce images of the products on white backgrounds. And so it just took that and suggested that here, which is helpful, but not game changing. Remember that emotion you were feeling about 10 minutes ago? How are you feeling now? Still scared or nervous or still excited? Whether you're a business owner, a marketer, you work at an agency, you're freelance, or you're someone who is a copywriter or designer, I get you may have very mixed feelings about all this. So what are the implications of these generative AI capabilities for those of us who work with Google Ads? For business owners, I think this is a net positive. You know, creating great ads, in my opinion, is actually one of the hardest parts of Google Ads. You know, there are tons of courses and things to help you with like targeting and bidding and all that nitty gritty stuff, all that data analytical stuff. That's complicated, sure, but it's stuff we can figure out. And that's the place where we spend most of our time. What keywords should I use? What audiences should I use? Analyze what my bid strategy should be. You know, the place we don't spend much time, what is the user actually going to see? Because that and your website are going to have more impact on Google Ads success than anything else. So for business owners, whether you use a tool like this in platform or third party, just to get ideas or really to write your stuff for you, I think all in all, this is going to be a net positive. I saw some things in the Gemini example there that I'm like, yes, if I were running ads for the Playful Peacock, I would use those headlines. I think those are great. I would not have come up with that myself. The thing to be cautious of is something I mentioned earlier, which is the danger of the average. Now that everyone has access to these tools. It's been democratized. Anyone can use it for free like we just did. That means everyone has access to these most likely headlines and most likely descriptions and most likely images. 
So if you really want to get an edge, you're going to have to produce something that is above average, which by definition is just not something Gen AI can do. Now, what if you're a marketing on a marketing team in-house at a company? I also think this is really great for you because you're probably not just responsible for Google ads. You probably have to wear a lot of different hats. And this is going to help you wear a lot of different hats. Remember, generative AI isn't just for generating assets. You can also use it to do things like analyze your Google ad reports and tell you the key takeaways or to write scripts for you, right? So there's lots of ways you can use this to help you do more with less. Because when we're in-house marketers, we often have to do more with less. What's the impact here for agencies? I can understand some agencies being a bit concerned, like, oh, no, is this going to replace what we do? But no, there is more need now for agencies to partner with technology like this and use it to help you do even more, right? Like the data analysis I mentioned, like getting more ideas. And if you work in an agency, you're seeing lots of different Google Ads accounts. You're going to use this in lots more ways than your clients are. You can help be that partner who's going to give them the edge over this, bring them even stronger copy, even stronger assets, and even better landing page. All the stuff they need to get better results from Google Ads. And then finally, what if you're the person who makes a living writing or designing? You know, how does this impact you? I thought about that, and there's a great analogy I heard from someone I used to work with at Google named Matt Rivard. He shared this when he was being interviewed on the Marketing News Canada podcast. Uh, And he said, you know, we still have painters, even though photography exists. Like cameras came out, people can take pictures. They can instantly have an image of something that happened in real life. So do we not need painters anymore? No, painters used to have to paint a lot of real life portraits and bowls of fruit and landscapes, and they can absolutely still do that. But it also frees up the painter to move into impressionism or abstraction or all these other kinds of things you can do with the medium. And I think that analogy absolutely makes sense here. Generative AI is great at what? At producing the average at doing exactly what you ask it to do. Nothing more, nothing less. What would Gemini we saw? It did a little more, but like still pretty bare minimum, right? So if you're someone who has one of these skills that you've been honing, you can produce something that is going to be so much better than what an average making machine can do, which is really what Gen AI is. And so those who can afford to work with you and use your skills are going to get even stronger results. Now, if I were a copywriter or designer, which I am not, I would also want to work with and test these systems every day and see what I can learn from it. A great example of this is in a documentary called AlphaGo. Uh, and it's about the DeepMind division of Google who taught a large language learning model to play the game of Go, which is infinitely more difficult to learn than chess. And it was able to beat the human champion. But what was so interesting about the way that this uh, AI system played Go was that it made some moves that to a human eye, it's like, what the heck did it just do? That move made no sense. That was dumb. That was a mistake. And it wasn't until much later in the end game that they saw, wow, that move that it made, you know, 20, 30 moves ago that at the time made no sense. I see now it was playing this really long game. And so by studying that, although that AlphaGo system learned to play Go based on watching humans, it wasn't explicitly programmed. And so it picked up new ideas and different ways of playing that humans hadn't considered. And so now humans can go study that to make them even better at playing the game Go. And there's absolutely an opportunity here for creatives to do the same thing with Gen AI. To wrap it up for today, there are two skills that, in my opinion, every PPC practitioner needs in 2024 that they did not need just a few years ago. And that is the ability to create great ad assets and the ability to optimize an effective landing page. Both of these aspects are so critical for campaign success that we are doing our own businesses or our clients' businesses or our company's businesses a disservice if we don't at least have some knowledge of both of these things. And Gen AI can help us be better at both of those things. So do I understand the fear? Absolutely. Is it irrational? No, it's not. But what I'm doing is trying to use generative AI every day in my business in different ways so I can get used to it, understand what it's good at, understand the limitations so it can help me get better at what I do. And I encourage you to do the same. Next time you're opening up Google Ads or whatever ad platform you're using, hop on over to ChatGPT or Gemini. You know, have it do the task you're about to do alongside you. See what it comes up with. See what you learn. The more we work with and become familiar with these systems, the less scary they'll become. So that when you hear those two letters, AI, it'll inspire not fear, but excitement and optimism about what's to come.